uh, talk a little bit about the suborbital CubeSat experiment mission uh, we call SOCOM. Um, it started off in uh, discussions with the Sounding Rockets program office at Wallops, um, talking about ways that we could fly a payload on, on a mission that they were, they were launching, an experimental mission. And we, we kicked around a few ideas on ways that we could um, include a payload in a sounding rocket, and then it sort of evolved into, well, how could we eject a payload from a sounding rocket? And we eventually got to the point of, of, of ejecting the CubeSat form factor and um, worked with Cal Poly to uh, get a modified P-Pod, which they use to launch orbital satellites. Um, um, they're called the Poly CubeSat um, Launcher, PCL. And um, we talked and iterated with, with, uh, with Wallops and got to the point where we had a, a blow-off door and uh, a technique where we could launch the CubeSats out of the, um, out of the rocket body using this, this modified, this modified P-Pod. There was quite a bit of work that went into to getting it right so that they would eject correctly and um, getting the, the masses so the centripetal forces would balance and, and getting those, those satellites ejected. But uh, hopefully we got it all right. So uh, along with the, the capability to launch the CubeSats, we wanted to design a, a CubeSat ourselves. And you'll hear a little bit about um, how that all went together. Um, but we start, sort of started um, talking about ideas for payloads that we could launch in an advanced embedded systems course and then kind of worked out the basic uh, bus and, and started writing some of the, the initial software. and then. Uh, the Space Systems Lab sort of took it from there and, and, and formed the satellite at Domicet, which you'll hear about as well. So um, Kentucky um, served as the sort of the mission integrator for this um, for this mission, and also provided one of the, the CubeSat payloads. Finally, since the um, uh, payloads are not recovered, the um, experiment data is sent down via radio. So there's actually ground stations that the, the students developed as well you hear about those designs um, for um, picking up packets at Wallops um, on the island and also the, um, the payload when it's released to be released in space uh, will be visible from Kentucky to be above the horizon so there's actually larger ground stations back in Kentucky that we'll use to uh, get the data. SOCOM stands for the Suborbital CubeSat Experimental Mission. Um, the whole idea behind it is we're taking um, the Wallops flight facility sanding rocket program and we're using specifically their 17 inch diameter rockets and we're combining it with CubeSats which have been uh, flown by several different universities and then even some larger corporations Boeing and NASA's flown CubeSats in the past. So it's a well-known platform for fast access to space and often low-cost access to space. We're taking that, we're merging it directly into the 17-inch diameter Wallops Flight Facility sanding rocket program. And we're trying to combine these two together to make a new platform for getting your hardware into space really fast and hopefully even cheap. And then that's kind of the whole idea behind it. Um, there's a lot of motivation for this. Um, and lots of times you want to try something in space and you don't have the, the time for a, um, an orbital mission. So having this opportunity to do a faster suborbital mission is um, incredibly useful. So SOCOM is kind of the demonstration flight for this. It's gonna be flying on the Wallops Hall 12.067 sounding rocket. And Wallops is um, using this sounding rocket to test a new motor that they have a surplus of. It's, they're calling it the Improved Malamute. And so they just want to test this motor to see if it works. And we have this extra idea of trying out putting CubeSats on the rocket and seeing how it will play out. Uh, Domasat was, it began as a student project for one of our advisor's classes and better systems course at the University of Kentucky. Uh, I was one of the students that was in the class and also worked in the lab, so I worked as systems engineer uh, as a go-between uh, for everything that happened in the, in the class and uh, everything that happened in the lab as well. I also led the uh, electrical engineering aspect of it, uh, designing several of the boards and putting them together in the interconnects. Um, as far as 
the major components of the electrical side, you've got the antenna cutters and also the payload interface module, which is a major component of the K-1 satellite that we're also working on. It's our flagship mission for the Space Systems Lab. Uh, the payload interface module is what um, the main satellite bus for K-1 uses to communicate with all of the subsystems, such as the antenna cutter, which we're testing. Uh, as well as the camera backpack and other things that will be on the Kentucky satellite. The, the payload of the Adamasat satellite is actually um, part of the Kentucky Sat 1's antenna deployment system. The Kentucky Sat 1 is the orbital satellite that's being uh, put together by the uh, Space Systems Lab in Kentucky Space. And so, what the antenna deployment system does is Kentucky Sat 1 is a CubeSat and it has some long antennas that are made out of tape measures. But in order to stay within the envelope uh, that's required by CubeSats, those antennas actually have to be wrapped around the cube. And then what happens is we take some nylon coated fishing line and we wrap that around to, to, to keep it tight. And then we string that fishing line through um, one of these cutters, which is the payload. Um, and what happens is once KYSAT-1 is um, ejected, launched into orbit, uh, after about half an hour the computer will turn on and and actuate these cutters and actually deploy the antennas. And so the way these cutters work is it's, it's a coil of uh, what's called nichrome wire, which is like toaster wire. And um, what happens is once you run a current through it, it heats up um, just like a toaster and then the line cuts and the antennas deploy on Kentucky Set 1. Now the reason why we want to uh, test this first is that these are uh, very, um, very handmade uh, devices. We make them here in the lab. Um, they're, they're they're pretty small and it's a fairly critical part of Kentucky Set 1. If the antennas don't deploy, then we can't talk to it. So what we're trying to gain from this mission is a little bit of flight heritage and some uh, confidence in the reliability of these uh, very important parts of Kentucky Set 1. The rocket will launch out of Phelps Island of Virginia. we go up to 300 kilometers and after the boosting stage ends, uh, the blow off will deploy and launching a Dharma set and a Kapalit cube. So as soon as it launches out of the rocket, it uh, will start transmitting its uh, status and we, we, we will get a uh, temperature profile across the flight, so every few seconds we'll have a temperature reading and after a certain amount of time of soaking in space environment, the, 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 actual, the four cutters will cut, will, the experiments will be attempted, the cutters will cut and then the, the packets afterwards will start, will, will contain the experiment results. Um, we will have four, uh, three ground stations deployed at, at, on Wallops Island and we'll have uh, a high gain ground stations here in Kentucky, um, in Moorhead, Kentucky and here in Lexington at UK, um, pointed e e east and uh, to, to, uh, towards the trajectory of the rocket and we'll be able to have these five ground stations to, to pick up these packets. We're also using the standard North American APRS frequency so we'll have many amateur radio uh, operators, hams, listening in and uh, helping us retrieve the data. Um, right, and we also provided a, a graphical user interface for, for amateur radio operators. To, uh, basically, a graphical user interface is software that will take data from the radio, plot it on the GUI, and then they can also they can see what happened to our satellites and get a reading for the temperature profiles and experiment results. And for the SOCA mission, I was responsible for uh, developing the ground station network that we will be retrieving our data from at the uh, NASA Wallops facility in Virginia. Um, as a part of this, I organized all equipment, uh, the receiving systems I developed with the help from my faculty members and fellow team members, and organized all equipment and ground station stuff. So the uh, Sockham slash Domaset mission has been an uh, outstanding uh, mission for the Moorhead students and uh, especially the uh, opportunities for these guys to work on uh, mobile ground stations and work with the communication systems of a suborbital satellite has been, been pretty incredible. Um, as you know, Kentucky Space is a consortium of uh, six universities and typically at Moorhead we've been working with the communication systems, uh, antennas, uh, transceivers, radios, um, and then the ground operations end of things. So the Moorhead students have been responsible for uh, putting together the uh, the mobile ground stations and will be responsible for the, uh, the ground ops pulling down the data and the telemetry from the uh, suborbital satellite. Overall, SOCOM was, was a great learning experience. Um, in, um, Establishing the infrastructure to be able to, to eject CubeSats from the, the sounding rocket, uh, working with Cal Poly on the launcher, and also um, launching a 1U CubeSat um, 
from Cal Poly to test some of their bus technologies. Uh, it was a really great experience for all of us. And as always, working with Wallops and the, and the, and the folks at Wallops is exciting. Um, we hope to, to do more of these types of launches in the future. Hopefully you're watching the extended version of this or you stay tuned to the Space Systems Lab YouTube channel for, for footage of the, of the launch itself, which is coming up in a couple weeks. That should be very exciting.